Welcome to PL Wooden Exposed. I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and I'm excited. I have with me here, sitting on our choir stand at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, some of the greatest Christian workers, in my opinion, in the body of Christ. And I'm going to go to them and let you hear from them. For these people are actually out every Saturday on the front lines fighting at abortion clinics, uh, praying, seeking God to save the lives of unborn babies. My friends, 1,876 black babies are aborted in this country per day. And we're looking for pastors and leaders, bishops, pastors, evangelists, preachers, uh, churches to organize Find the clinics in your city and fight for the unborn. We don't want to hear anything about the gar this garbage. We, we believe in a woman's right to choose. My friends, that's genocide taking place in the black community. And we're not going to be willing participants in our own demise. If you go to our town hall meeting uh, se segment one, you'll see where I gave the numbers. At, at the, the, the sheer number of, uh, of black babies that are being aborted in this country, it, it, it's appalling. Calling. It's scary. It's criminal. We are not reproducing at replacement levels. And I believe that African Americans have a right to live. Someone asked me the other day, I said, Preacher, why do you do this? And I said this, I'm in love with, with African Americans and I believe that our people have a right to live just as other Americans do. Because I do believe that black lives matter, but they're being eradicated at abortion clinics. Now I want to go to the go to these workers. Sister Leslie, how you doing? I'm great. Thank you for coming today. We are honored to speak to you. You are one of the workers who are out there uh, in this effort leading to save the lives of the unborn. Would you share with uh, uh, the PL Wooden Exposed audience the things that you see and some things that you've you've experienced while out there? Absolutely. Well, Bishop, it certainly is an honor to stand up for the unborn. Um, a particular scenario comes to my mind. A young lady um, and her boyfriend were there, and um, it was a dark day. It was a lot, a lot of abortions taking place that day. And what stands out is that they brought their child with them, and the child was running around the clinic grounds. And it was such an oxymoron because they're doing away with life in the inside, and this vibrant little girl is just running around on the grounds. The contradiction you speak of is while she's running and playing, yes. her little sister or little brother is being killed. I wonder how she would feel if she knew while she's out there running that mom is in there. And 98% of the time, it's because the child is simply unwanted. Absolutely. Well, mom couldn't make up her mind. So, well, yeah, mom and dad were struggling with the issue. And it was the Holy Ghost that told me to go over there and talk with the young man. He couldn't actually go inside. And so I talked with him and asked him what the problem was and why they were there. And he gave a host of um, uh, grievances, um, but it boiled down to they thought they couldn't afford it, another child. And uh, after talking to him and um, <laughs> finding out his gospel roots, and um, uh, just, just giving him some encouragement, he actually was able to change her mind. That's all she was waiting on. That's what she was waiting on. So they actually were able to make a decision. They came off of the grounds. He was not allowed to go back in and get her, so he had to use his cell phone to call her. And she responded to him. She came out. He said he wanted the baby, and they kept the baby. Woo! Glory, 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 glory. What, what, what a story, and what a, what a happy ending. Yes. And for the child, a brand new beginning. Yes. To God be the glory. Amen. Just you know, you see these things mm -hmm. every Saturday yes. down there at the clinic. Who, who's next? Who wants to share a story of the things that, that, that you see take place uh, on, on, a, on, a, on a weekly basis? God bless Brother McCoy. Bless you, Bishop. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I know you were talking about statistics. There's one statistic I just came across the other day, and it talked about that we're, we make up 13 to 12% of the population. Well, let's just say half of that is women. 
All right, from the childbearing age, 15 to 44, that's three percent. Out of that three percent, we're responsible for 37 percent of the abortions. Wow. So that if that doesn't stir a preacher, if that doesn't stir anyone else that's saved, that's black, I mean, I don't know what else could. So that was really, when I found it out, I think it was, I was studying last night, Sunday night, I was looking over some things, Issue for Life, Issues for Life is, is the website I looked over. And I, and I seen it, I said, man, it's not 12%, it's only 3%, 3 to 4% of our women of, of, of the 12% of the 12%, of our 12 of the 12 population from the childbearing age, responsible for all, these all those abortions. That's big. That really brings it home. That's a, I mean, that, 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 that almost made me cry a little bit because I'm like, man, there's so many babies, so many of us being wiped out. But that's, that's one of many stories we can, we can really share. Part of the lesson is that there are dark times. Yes, sir. When, 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 when the truth is, in this presentation, we don't want to give the, the impression that every Saturday we win. That's right. But every Saturday we're there. That's the point. And, and if we can multiply that around the country with other preachers and churches, you know, it, it, it heightens the likelihood that, that somebody is going to be spared. Because at most abortion clinics, none of us are there. Who's next? Who would like to share? Carl. Yes, God bless you, brother. Good day, man. Now, here's the whole thing. We're not asking people to come out all day. We're not asking people to come out four or five hours. We're asking people to come out for less time than they spend watching a football or a basketball game. One hour. One hour of prayer. Now, the, the Catholics have been out there for a, a number of years, and the first comment that I heard when I, when I went out for the first time is, we're glad to see you. We don't know what to say to these people when they, I'm like, these people, what else? We don't know what to say to these people when they come in. When we're out there, we talk to people that we see at the barbershop, people that we've seen at the beauty parlor, people that we see down at the mall, people that their kids go to school with our kids, uh, daughters that, that, that play with our daughters that come in because they quote unquote made a mistake. You know, my story when it, when it comes to the abortion issue is that I heard my grandmother tell my mama on her deathbed that I, I tried to abort you. I jumped out of the tree many times trying to get you to shake loose. But your aunt came out and said, that child that you're trying to kill may very well be the one to take care of you on your deathbed. And on her deathbed, as she, fit, as she, she fed her her last meal of fish, she recited that, that story. So what does that mean to me? That means that if, if, if Planned Parenthood was down in South Carolina back in the 40s, I wouldn't be standing here having this conversation. Nor my children, nor any of my siblings, we wouldn't be here. How many countless lives have been slaughtered because of inconvenience? Now the question is, what's the difference between a one-year-old and that child in the womb? The size, the level of the dependency, the environment, very small differences, and it's not, not, enough to, not, not enough for somebody to die. You know, one of the, the, the comments that we hear quite often from some of the escort workers that are out there is that we, 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 we need to mind our own business and we need to find something else to talk about. Um, I remember the first time that, that you came out and we had a, a lot of the, the saints that came out that day. Uh, they actually put up a, a, a bounty of sort and they raised money based on the number of, 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 of prayer warriors that came out to stand in front of the clinic and simply pray. We're not asking everybody to speak. We're not asking everybody to speak. We're asking you to come out and with, your, with, your, with, your, with your relationship with the Lord Jesus and simply pray for one hour. One hour. It, do, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of planning. It doesn't take a whole lot of, 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 of getting your, your courage up because you're doing something that you already do. Jesus said that we're to go into our prayer closets. After you get out of that prayer closet, come and stand in front of the abortion clinic and let the Lord hear your voice because there are many people that are going up those, those steps that are looking for a sign. And you might be that sign. Bishop, I stand at the entrance to the abortion clinic. I have a sign that shows the danger of abortion because it's not without danger. But we're continuously praying that they can keep their children because God has a purpose for their life.
Pastor, it, it is um, certainly a, an honor and a privilege just to stand um, on, on Saturdays and, and just to have a voice for those that have no voice, and that is the unborn um, babies in the womb. Uh, one, one scenario that comes to mind is a Saturday when you were out there. It was a very cold day, and I um, will always remember you looking, myself, and I believe Elder King was out there, Elder um, McNeil and um, Elder Wilson, just several of the workers, and you said, I got up this morning and I was pumping iron, and I thought about uh, the babies and their little body parts being ripped apart, and I said, I got to go and fight for these babies and speak for the unborn, and you think about that when you um, wake up on those cold mornings or those hot days and the days when it's misting and the days when it's raining, and you think about just the fact that you're you're, you're speaking for those that can't speak for themselves. And, um, you know, as aforementioned, the, uh, many times the escorts, they'll say things to you. They call us names. They'll literally bump into us and, and, and you know, dare us to hit them or sometimes even say that we bump them um, just to get us off task and just to be a distraction to us. Um, that particular day we were quite effective, and I will never forget um, one of the uh, – main workers out there, the escort, she's bent over and literally stuck her derriere in our face on that day. Um, you know, she did that and there was, someone had written on the concrete, love the babies, and she took, she went inside and she came back and she poured water and just um, took a brush and, or a toothbrush or something that day and, and just tried to scrape it off. And it's just, that's one of the many um, experiences that we've had out there. And again, on that day, as on many of the days, we were quite effective. Um, but I just thank God for just the opportunity to just go out there and have a voice. We see babies saved. We see people that say, you know, I didn't realize that this is actually what it was. I didn't realize when we give them the statistics and we show them the pictures of what is really taking place, we have people that says, you know, I'm going to keep my baby. I didn't know it was this bad. Um, and so I just, again, thank God for this, just the opportunity to go out there and just to speak up for babies and to help save lives. The level of wickedness that we see with these escorts is literally unbelievable. These are women that literally dance when they see people go in the clinic um, to abort their babies. They, um, When we're walking to people and saying, hey, can we just pray for you? Can we just give you some statistics? Can we give you some resources and let you know that there are other options? They'll come and they'll, they have little speakers now. So they've come before and put their speakers in front of us to tune us out so that the persons can't hear what we're saying. They brought a dog out there and literally made it known that a four-legged animal was more important to them than a human life. And they brought their dogs out there and just danced in front of us. And, um, and, many and these are Caucasian women that are escorting black women into the clinic. We're not being racist, but, it, but, but there is a racial component to it because these escorts are white women who literally dance in the streets, not figuratively, but literally dance while the black women are on the inside uh, having the abortions. Now to give the escorts credit, they didn't drive the women from their homes to the clinic. So gotta be fair. But once they get on those clinic grounds, these women, they they are adamant. I mean they, they and they, they play loud rap music, black music to drown out black people so they can abort black babies. And they'll, uh, they'll, you know, laugh when someone goes in. Maybe perhaps someone says, no, I don't want prayer. And they walk in. They'll laugh and they'll dance and say, aha, we, we got one. And this is the kind of things that we see out there. Brother Jerome. I just want to say, Bishop Wooden, thank you for your stance for the unborn because America needs someone to speak for the unborn. Well, th thank you. And thank you so much. Yes, but while out there, there's many other scenarios that we see. One thing we see is out there we have a plan. Mm -hmm. We've been out there for more than over three years, mm -hmm. right. jointly together. Glory. And glory. to God be the glory. glory. We pray. Has it been that long? It's been over yeah. about Praise three years. Lord. Wow. And strategically, the building that we stand is maybe about 30 footsteps. So we can actually see the man and the female going, coming out of the car in the parking lot. We can see the relationship, the eyes, the body movement. And what's so troubling is they see their own kind. Mm -hmm. So there then the consciousness begins to work. That's good. Because That's good. they had not seen that before. Right, They're right. They're coming from different cities, Virginia, South Carolina, and Ro Land Rovers, Mercedes. 
So we are educating. Wait a minute. They're coming in Land Rovers and yes, sir. Mercedes. So, yes, sir. Yes, so sir. So in many cases, it's not economics. Not ec no, sir. It's not no, money. No, sir. No, sir. No, wow. sir. Wow. And from Delaware and Virginia. Delaware. Yes, wow. sir. Wow. And so this is disturbing. So we're out there educating them, letting them know, because they have at least 15 to 20 footsteps before they get to the door. Mm. So we have plenty of time to speak, and they do listen. Yeah. But now, on the second part, the escorts block, them, block us. They use umbrellas. They use any, any imagery, any uh, thing that can block the view, the voice of us speaking. But to God be the glory. We still have men, Elder McNeil, others, Elder Wilson, others, that's speaking to them while we're engaging. Mm. But then we're letting them know, too, that your mother kept you. Right. So here you are going inside, deciding to take a child. Mm -hmm. It ought not be. Right. And then we're speaking, God has plans for your child. Mm -hmm. God knew your child in right. your mother's womb. Right. Jeremiah 1 and 5. Right. Then we're saying to them, the little one will say, take my hand and not my life. Mm -hmm. That's the cry. Mm -hmm. So there's a victory out there. And one instance we saw was that when you was out there, the gentleman was inside. They went in. The man comes in. The man does not want to do it. Right. But he, for some reason, succumbs to the woman, goes inside. But we told the man, look here, you can go inside. If you're courageous and bold, mm -hmm. you don't want to do it, prove. Show right. your girl that you don't want to do it. He, he went actually in went inside. Yeah, he went in like a football player. Went in like a football player. <laughs> came out and brought her and that was the victory. And that was the day she gave that thumbs up. She gave the thumbs which, up. Which was the prettiest sight. Yes, One it was. One of the prettiest things I've ever seen in my life. Yes, it was. It was amazing. And so the other incident is when the other female, she comes out, and she declares on the stand, on the porch, which is about 15 footsteps, I'm keeping my child. So the key thing is we are educating them with material. We have resources. Yes, sir. One, first of all, we have Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. That will yes, tell, sir. tells That's them, it. cast That's all it. your cares Glory. upon Glory him, for he cares God. for you. Amen. So Amen. with them Amen. not realizing that we got finance report, we got help, support, mm -hmm. and any others, if you're deciding to keep your child now, we are here. Someone's willing to listen. That's we have fantastic. Gateway and others. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. That's beautiful. Yes, sir, Brother Corey. As has been alluded to, Bishop, it is a privilege to actually be out there to, to do something that is actually literally trying to help uh, p people in society and to save the babies. And one thing that comes to mind is, as has been alluded to already, is the education aspect. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people don't understand that the mother of Planned Parenthood, if you will, Margaret yeah. Sanger, right. actually in a, in a document to Clarence Gamble, actually spoke that we don't want the African Americans to know that we're trying to get rid of them. Right. And so when we're out there and we see how the interaction takes place, you know, fighting us, you know, as African Americans, when we're trying to talk to other African Americans and seeing the Caucasian escorts escort them in, it, it brings about frustration, but it brings about passion because we're trying to let them know we love you for what you need. Right. You know, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting mm -hmm. life. And that love literally means to love for what is needed, not for what is desired. Oh, that's and great. And so we try and let them know we're out here that's because right. what you need to understand is that there are repercussions if you go down this path. Mm -hmm. There are things that are going to happen. There is yeah. mental anguish that's yeah. going to take place. And even with one of the escorts, you know, things have happened in her life. And so she has her viciousness towards other people that are actually experiencing it now. Right. Uh, we've had situations where we've heard of older women that are still having to take counsel today. And right. she was 60 something years old, mm. still having to go through counsel today because of what took place yeah. over 30 or 40 years mm. prior. So it is a very serious situation, but our main focus is always to let them know that we're out here because we love you. We're out here because we yeah. see that there is right. a need right. and we want to help you to avert things that don't have to be. That's fantastic. Amen. Thank you. Bishop, I am a father of two. Yes, sir. I'm a businessman in this yes, area. I'm a committed husband to my wife. I pay my taxes. Yes. Law-abiding citizen. Mm -hmm. 
And yes, the laws are clear. Women today can have that opportunity to go and murder their child. Right. However, it may be lawful, but it is not expedient. No, sir. I'd like to bring attention to the dismay, the difficulty to articulate what we see and experience at the clinic. Right. As many of the fellow co-laborers in the gospel have already shared, it is almost difficult to share in words what it's like to be there. Right. Almost three years ago, we engulfed upon this mission that you rallied and called us all to right. as a result of a business meeting. Right. That's true. And Bishop, I wasn't prepared for what I saw, mm. for what I heard, and what I experienced. Mm. To stand there and see multiple generations of sons and daughters that know better slaughter these babies. Yes, sir. To experience the pure hatred that is spewed from the lips of these abortion clinic escorts is unbelievable. It's, it's visceral. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is just that, to know that they have no regard for human life. Mm -mm. But mm -mm. I'll tell you this, sir, our efforts are not in vain. No, sir. When we started three years ago, there was maybe one or two clinic escorts that would show up. Yeah. But oftentimes, to measure your effectiveness, you have to see how the opposition yeah. right. responds. Right. Right. It has grown to the point that they have had upwards of six to ten workers right. escorting. Mm -hmm these parents and their unborn children to the slaughter. Police have been called on us yeah. for peaceful protests. They sent seven cars out there. Seven cars, <laughs> indeed, with trucks mm -hmm. and vehicles. They came to take us away. To take us away. <laughs> and it is important to know we have the proper documentation. Yep. yep. We have everything as it relates to the ordinances of Raleigh. Excellent. Put excellent. in order. Yes. We have an excellent evangelistic president and team Amen. that makes sure all of our checks, I's, and T's are dotted and crossed. That's good. However, they still find a way. Mm -hmm. Now, it's amazing to me that they say respect the right to choose. Mm -hmm. And my question is, then why can't you respect our right to peacefully protest? Right, right. So, Pastor, I just am grateful to God for the opportunity to stand in the gap. Hallelujah. For these voiceless children. Hallelujah. To stand in the gap for uneducated mothers mm -hmm. and fathers. Mm -hmm. And I only hope and pray, as you dealt with in your intro, that others will hear and That's see. It. That's it. The sincerity of heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. People of like mind and mm -hmm. like color. Mm -hmm. to join the cause, right. to rally together, to say no longer will we sit idly by. That's good. Because black lives, black lives. do matter. They do matter. Well said. And, and you know, I, I say to the, I, I say to the um, African Americans who are watching this, yes, sir. we can't leave everything mm -hmm. up to the white man to fix. Right. Why aren't we in larger numbers, out fighting for the lives of our own. This is something that we can do. Yes, and, and I'll tell you, if we're going to be effective, it's something that we must do. I like what you said. Uh, one of you said that the, the Catholic said when we showed up the first time, I'm glad to see you all. Because I don't know what to say to them. Well, these are older white people who have a wonderful heart, but they don't interact with us. So we know what to say. Yes. Well, I, one of the first times I, I, I stepped out there, Brother Wilson, you took me and took me by the hand, walked me up to the area, told me where I could stand, told me where I couldn't stand, what's legal, what's illegal. Corey, you were right there with him. And so then I got, to, I got, got my footing down and, 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 and jumped into the fight. We'll, we'll help other churches organize. Yes. But you got to organize. You got to organize. And if you don't, and you let this slaughter take place and you do nothing, shame on you. You, you, can't, you can't do this. We, we can't 
we can't even let this boil down to politics. Someone say, well, it's a matter of politics. Not to that baby. It's bigger than politics. It's life or death. Yes. My name is Erison, mm -hmm. and I would just like to just give a brief statement. Um, what drives me is sometimes, you know, you look at yourself, and when you look at yourself and you think about the things that you did when you, before you met Christ or yes. even before I had a child. Yes, sir. As a father, I, get, I got to see my children born. And as I saw the first child come out of my wife's birth canal, I, the Lord brought to my mind, he said, you remember that, di that day? Remember that girl? Remember when you said that, hey, out of convenience, I really didn't want this child. I, I act like a big, a big baby. Yes, sir. And then I, she went back to New York. I was in Michigan. She went back to New York. And she said, she called me up. She said, I had a miscarriage. Mm. Now, that day, I was running around the house happy. But as I saw birth for the first time, God Almighty. it made me shameful. The Lord brought to me the damage that I caused on my own seed. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I urge people, not those who, had, who may have been to the, had an abortion, I mm -hmm. urge you to think about not the shame, but now God gets the victory because I get to fight for that baby or yeah. that other baby that Man, I get to save powerful. someone else. That's so powerful. that's why I, that's my drive and that's my focus. That is powerful. And thank you for sharing that because you didn't have to. And, and what a powerful story. And, and that's another thing that we don't want to get lost in this. If you've, if you've had an abortion and you've repented, God's forgiven you. We're not here to condemn anybody. We're trying to recruit workers to save, save more children. You can't go back and change your past. You can't undo anything that was done. Everyone on this stage, we've all been forgiven for sins. That's the beautiful, beautiful thing about Christianity. We're all equally lost. All are sinners at the foot of the cross. And Jesus Christ is for every man. So what we're saying is, even if, even if you have, if you've repented, you're forgiven, but that doesn't disqualify you. Let it qualify you. Let it quantify you. Let it rally you to, to become a worker, to save the next child, because we need you. We need you. We need your presence. We need your prayers. We need your voice. And more importantly, uh, the next child needs you. It doesn't make you a hypocrite to try to save one, uh, uh, save the next baby, even if you aborted yours. You know, uh, people say, well, how can I say something against something that I did myself? Easy. Uh, all preachers, all preachers, every teacher, every prophet, everyone except Jesus Christ. Yes, sir preached about something yes, that they did themselves because yes. everyone who God used have sinned yes. and yes, come short of the glory of God. Yes. Our past sins doesn't disqualify us. Being washed in the blood qualifies yes. us. Yes. So we need you. Yes. Join us. Who's next? Who's next? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Um, Bishop, I just thank God for the opportunity not only to work out on the front lines is what I call it when mm -hmm. we're in front of the clinic. Those are the trenches. Yes, ma'am. That's where the um, demonic warfare is gone on and the battle is hot. Yes, ma'am. The enemy is running too. He is, uh, he's scattering. Mm. We yes. see that. We see where um, even his forces, we see the, 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 the um, countenance of the um, escorts is changing. They're mm. looking different. Mm. Um, one of the uh, main escorts that um, seems to be most aggressive, um, a couple of weeks ago I was out there and I looked at her and I said, um, what's going on with her? Her face was as white as snow. She right. looks like she was dying. But um, I see the effect mm. of our being out oh, there God. on yeah. the mm. escorts, on mm. the whole area, oh, on God. the abortion issue in this area. Mm. Now, I have also the opportunity to work um, outside of the front lines, out further away from the clinic right. where the women, when they come from out of that environment, now they can be helped. Their ears are open. We can talk to them. That's good. And with our partnership with one of the um, 
um, um, pregnancy resource um, centers here, we have the opportunity that when they meet our workers and other workers out there on the front lines and they do leave and come to one of the um, resource centers, we have the opportunity to speak life into them at that point. We, they have the opportunity to stop and consider oh, what great. they're yeah. doing and what it means. We don't have the other forces around them that would misdirect them. And we see many successes in there. There Praise are some God. that we don't win. That's true. And the Lord has already told us, you're not going to win them all. Right, but right. if you win that one, that's the one that we were out there for. Amen. So that, you know, the, the battle is on. The, the, um, the workers are there. The warriors are out there. And we are encouraged because we see the enemy fleeing in many directions. Hallelujah. So we, you know, we just want more. Glory. We need to do the same thing again over on Jones Franklin. We need to have a group out there. We need some of the other churches and ministries to get involved into this, this work so that we can defeat the enemy. We, I believe the enemy can be defeated, or we can really punch a big hole in his program. And that's what we're doing out there, and we've got the most wonderful workers that are diligent, faithful, I mean, that are there and are praying. And it is the prayer mm. that's going to break every single yoke. Thank it's you, the Jesus. prayer. When those women see us, see our, our color, our women out there, when they look over at us, they see that mother, they see their mothers, they see their grandmothers, you know, and they have to mm. think again. They got to think again. Mm. Should I be doing this thing? Mm. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they walk away. Sometimes they don't. But we're there. We're going to be there. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Marlene. Bishop, thank you for this opportunity. And I thank God for just being able to be out there to... Uh, you know, to do what we do, to pray and to help save unborn. Um, I wanted to share an experience as this video goes out across the world, hopefully, yes. that um, sometimes you may think that you're not being as effective. and you, We really can't see everything that's going on in the background. We don't know, you know, we may have talked to someone and we don't know what they decided to do, but sometimes God will just encourage us yes. and one way that he did that was last summer um it, what i thought was a coincidental conversation with a lady that i worked with i we we were on break and we just had a conversation about spiritual warfare and just you know working for the lord and i was about to talk about what we do out on saturday mornings but before i got a chance to open my mouth to tell her she started talking about her daughter mm. she said her daughter works at this abortion clinic and you know she she would go out there and there are some people out there who are praying and as she's talking I'm thinking I know she's not talking about the same one that we go to and, and she kept talking and I'm thinking Lord give me what to say and you know pray and she said she started saying that her daughter worked there and she would come home and have headaches and stomach aches she would be sick and this was going on for a long period of time she would go to the doctor and the doctor couldn't find anything wrong with her. And her mother, the one that I was talking to, she's a believer. Mm. And she said, she told her daughter, well, maybe you shouldn't, you know, maybe you shouldn't work there at the abortion clinic. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, her daughter took that in, but she was still going. And I finally, I said, what, which one is this? And she told me the name. I said, that's the one that we're gonna be at tomorrow. That's us. I said, that's us out there praying. And, <laughs> And, and she said, and to make a long story shorter, it, it had been, at that point, her daughter had left the abortion clinic. She said she couldn't take it anymore. She said that, you know, she would go there, go to work, and, you know, evidently we thought she was one of the ones going in for an abortion. And she said one of the workers said, you don't have to do this. And, you know, she would get smart. You know, the escorts they, and the workers, they would get smart with us. And, you know, you, you know we, we've told you a little bit of how they treat us. Mm. But she would go inside the clinic, lock herself in the bathroom, and just cry. Mm. And so finally she left there. God let her mother and her prayed that she would get another job. And so her mother told me, she said, tell everybody that's out there, keep praying oh, because God. it's working. Oh, Hallelujah. Now, I, I, that, that is Amen. one of the most powerful yes, sir. things I've ever heard. Yeah. That's amazing. Yes, sir. And that tells us that we're actually touching the escorts also. Yeah. Yeah. Pastors, yeah. bishops, leaders, 
men of God, women of God, help us. Get in this fight. Get in this fight. Hey, Esther, mm -hmm. we Mordecai's yes. are calling you. Yes. Get in this fight. Genocide is planned for, uh, for our people. Mm -hmm. Let's get in the fight. Yes. Who's next? Our time is running out uh, in this uh, P.L. Wooden uh, segment, but I pray that you are being blessed by these testimonials of, of these people who give their time and their effort to this great cause. Lauren. Bishop, I thank you for the opportunity to, to serve, and I, and I thank you for the information that you give us week in and week out because you, that, that has been a help because I used to be one that was just straight Democrat. I go to the voting polls, pull the lever, straight Democrat without looking up any facts or any information. But the information that you've given, that you give us week in and week out has changed the way I look at candidates that when I go out, I actually look at the information and think policies and things that they, they support. Two things that were most disturbing to me this Saturday when I went out was as the frontline workers are just pouring out their, their soul and speaking to the women that are going in, I remember an incident that's just clearly in my mind when Elder King was speaking with one of the escorts and he said, instead of escorting them in, why don't you ask them to come out? And the look that was on her face when she looked back at him with a grin and a sarcastic look on her face, she just looked back at him and said, no. Mm. And that went through me as to say, no, we have them where we want them. Yeah, it's demonic. Yes, yeah. It's that, a sinister plan. Yes, I, that, was, that just cut deep and mm -hmm. to, to see, and it was two women when they were um, mentioning to them to when they, as Elder King mentioned before, that he said, your mother had you. Mm -hmm. And these were women that looked like they may be around 60 in their 60s. And it was two women that said, I wish she hadn't. Mm -hmm. And that is, that, that's disturbing to, to when you see people that are that shallow when it comes to the life of the unborn, the things that they'll say, and the things that the escorts would do because being a person that's born in the 60s uh born during a time of uh when we were fighting for civil civil rights and the rights of of african americans and to see people that are less informed there when when racism has shifted from the days of the clan lynching to them yeah. now attacking the unborn is it's, it's sad that we are uh, people that are less informed and not not with with the racism that's today opposed to where it was in the 60s.